salutations. I'm Gil. And I'm Gil, and this is Strategic Prepper. Hey guys, we've got some questions on what our tactical setups are, or at least what mine is. Um, before I get into that, so I'm gonna show you what my current tactical setup is, but head over to our Patreon if you want some more in-depth knowledge. So uh, we'll be putting out some videos on how do we set up a tactical system kind of from zero uh, to where we're at now. Uh, how do we do that, um, you know, in a balanced manner, right? So everything we talk about, everything's in a balance. We talk about concentric circles. So I don't want to put all my resources into building a tactical system and leave all these other gaps. In fact, I was talking with a friend uh, not that long ago about this, and he was asking about, uh, you know, how much ammo you should have and the weapons and whatnot. Um, and so we kind of discussed that. Part of the things I reminded him was, hey, you know, I did this over a long period of time to make sure that I didn't leave any one part of my, uh, my preps um, unattended. So check out our Patreon, go to that. The videos will be up there. Um, you'll get more individualized attention, right? So you can ask us questions and we can help you with your specific situation. And I can kind of break down uh, more in depth uh, how we actually go about doing the whole process behind this, not just you know showing you guys the gear I've got and whatnot. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so some of you older guys, this uh, might be kind of a no-brainer, but um, knee pads, right? So some of you younger guys might not um, immediately think of this unless you're doing dynamic training, right? So a tactical situation is a very dynamic situation. If you're just shooting uh, on the flat range, you may not think of this, but as you actually start doing uh, tactical stuff, small unit tactics and shoot, move, communicate, um, you're going to be running, you're going to be taking knees, uh, getting on your knees behind um, barricades and, and whatnot and maneuvering. You've got to take care of your knees just like you got to take care of your feet. So these are important. These are Alta brand knee pads. 5-Eleven makes some good ones. Arcteryx makes some good ones. They're out there. Make sure you find one that's comfortable that moves well with you. So this is a, kind of a supplemental pouch here. It's actually a saw 200 round mag pouch. I've got some helpful tools. All right, this is a Leupold Thermal. Uh, that's the LTO Tracker. I think these are six to eight hundred bucks. I can't remember. Um, you know, very handy. I can do another video at some point on the difference between thermal and night vision. They are not the same thing. They do not behave the same way. They're two different tools, two different pieces of technology. But I've got thermal there. And then a Sonix, uh Aurora, their, their base model, uh, basic night vision. It's, it's not Gen 3 night vision. In fact, in here, I've got an IR light uh, that, I, that I could use with this to illuminate uh, the night. You know, it's better than not having anything, right? So I can see better than you can with the naked eye. However, if the other guy's running night vision, I don't want to be shining this because he's going to see me. So eventually I'll get some nice Gen 3, but remember we talked about everything in a balanced approach, right? So instead of spending three, dollars $4,000 on a Gen 3 tube, I decided, uh, hey, you know what? I've got other parts of my preparedness um, system that need to be up updated, right? So, and uh, all right, let's take a look at my battle belt. So I do run a battle belt. It takes some of the weight off my shoulders. Uh, I used to run everything on my plate carrier. I started running the battle belt to get that weight on my hips, off my shoulders, off my back, and it allows me to, to scale up my tactical uh, system, right? So if I take off my plate carrier, or if I don't want to wear a full plate carrier, I still have a pistol, pistol mag, two AR mags. Uh, and so you notice here, pistol uh, holster, it's active retention, so I don't just do friction fit. Um, a miniature IFAC, so I've got a soft TY tourniquet folded up, compressed gauze, gloves, and medical tape. And then on this side, you'll notice I, I depart a little bit from what a lot of guys do. I only have one pistol reload, okay? Now, you notice I do have two mag pouches. A lot of your tactical classes require two. That's why I have that. I keep it empty. Um, it's open to put in a light or a multi-tool or something. Uh, but, you know, I don't like loading a lot of pistol mags when I could load more AR max, right? If I, if I put a two, three, four pistol reloads, that's space that my rifle max could take up. And remember, if I'm using this already in a pretty 
serious tactical situation where I'm not concealed carrying anymore, well then my AR is my main weapon. I'd rather feed that than my pistol. Uh, but anyway, I've got two pistol mags here. It's an HSDI belt system, um, pretty comfy. And let's hit the rifle. So this is an 18 inch Rainier Arms Ruck Mod 2. Mm, probably picked this up about eight, 10 years ago. Um, I do like the longer barrels, so I like 18 and 20 inch ARs. Reality is I'm not clearing rooms and I'm not going house to house and I'm not uh, fighting out of vehicles. If I'm using this in a real life situation, I'm probably outdoors, civil unrest, maybe I'm protecting my house or a buddy. I can take the extra length. They're not heavy. Um, you know, I run 55 grain, 5.56, five, that's what I stockpile. It's actually pretty effective, but it's velocity dependent. It relies on velocity to work well. Hey, God designed the AR-15 to run out of a 20 inch barrel, so that's what I like. Uh, although this comes in 18, but close enough. Um, weapon light, one to six. Uh, it gives me the option to write right out one power. It does pretty good close range, six power. I can crank this up. Uh, I've hit man sized targets out to 600 yards with this. Um, obviously at that range, you'd preferably want to use like a 308 or something, but uh, I do like the ability of being able to reach out everything from zero to 600 with this Magpul two point sling. Pretty basic there. Uh, I can do a video at some point on AR selection. There's a whole, again, there's a whole theory behind that, or there's a whole, um, what am I trying to say? You gotta have some thought behind it. How's that, right? Instead of just buying the coolest gear, um, just like with everything else we do here, there's a system behind everything. So head to our Patreon. I'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do some videos on that. So before we get to the plate carrier, typically that's what people are excited to see, that and the rifle. I've got, uh, in some circles, it might be called an assault bag, a, a sustainment bag, but this, I have this to give me the ability to stay on site longer, right? So instead of just grabbing my plate carrier and either at my house, I'm outside, or maybe it's a buddy's house, think about 2020, um, civil unrest, and maybe you're at your house and you can't leave, or you got a close friend or someone in your mutual assistance groups that needs help and you're out there outside, you know, a couple days at a time. That's what this is for. So let's break this open. I've got a set of gloves. These are some thicker FR uh, outdoor research gloves. I love the. I don't even know if they make them anymore. I love these gloves. Two canteens full of water. Okay. I did the canteens instead of the hydration bladder, just for simplicity's sake. My bug out bag has a hydration bladder, but for this, I just did the canteens. Right, so three spare AR mags. So my, my basic loadout is is is, is, is five. I might be doing play care my battle about five AR mags and one in the gun, right? And I do it then, but not including. I have these three backups in my bag. Let me set this aside. Um, first aid kit, real basic uh, adventure medical kit, waterproof first aid kit. It's not an IFAC, okay? So think about like the civil unrest that we talked about in, in, in the 2020s and whatnot. Um, 2020s, no, in the year 2020. Uh, not everything is gonna require an IFAC, right? So uh, some kind of minor to moderate injury, I wanna be able to use something that without burning through my IFAC. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Some food, All right? So I might need some food. This is some granola. Uh, Little MRE burritos. You can get this at your typical outdoor store. Um, you need some food, right? This has got three year shelf life, 370 calories per. I got a few of these in there, but you need some food. Um, I've also got some rain gear. Now, something to think about with this. All right, I've got some nice camouflage rain gear. This stuff stays with the kit, okay? So, um, you got to remember this stuff, this is a standalone kit, right? So if I buy this nice rain gear, and so this, I got this from Barrow Stelka. Uh, it's like, I think it's a Finnish woodland pattern, right? It looks real cool. Sad thing is I never get to use it. Uh, I love how this thing looks and I never get to use it because it's dedicated to this kit, right? So, uh, yeah, I put it in the kit that way. I'm never in a situation where I grab it and 
oh no, I forgot to put my Gore-Tex back in there, right? Now it's raining, and if you're at your buddy's house or your place, just because it's raining doesn't mean you get to go home, right? So I have that in there. It's a Gore-Tex top and a bottom. Put that back in there. Okay, I did the food. So two more things. These two items you probably didn't think about. Here I've got uh, smoke grenades, right? So I've got three smoke grenades and I've got um, one airsoft flashbang. It's not as loud as a real flashbang. You know, BBs go everywhere. You know, the way I, I see it, I, I would probably use it like a flashbang potentially. It's pretty loud. I have blown one of these up before. Uh, you know, civil unrest. This gives me an option. You think about like 2020 or people at your house. Uh, and then the smokes, I got an orange, purple, and a white, right? So whether I'm using it for cover or I mean concealment or whether I'm using it for signaling, right? So if you got a plan with the group, a signaling plan, I tend to use purples for signaling. Um, but that's in there. And then this last one, I don't think I've seen anybody put this in their kit in any video I've ever seen. It. This is a blaze defense fire suppression device, okay? Now at my house, I've got fire extinguishers, and so I would have I don't know, 15 pound fire extinguishers, why not pre staged But look back to 2020, uh, the bad guys are using fire, right? Molotov cocktails, they're very effective. We're seeing them being used right now in Ukraine. Um, but 2020, it was the bad guys that was using them. And uh, yeah, if you're out and about helping your buddy or whatnot, and, and someone throws some Molotov cocktails, and one of your buddies, you know, half his body's on fire, arms on fire, whatever, you want to be able to quickly put them out. So these are always a good idea to have. Uh, having your kit. So the plate carrier. I've been running, I think I've been having this for eight or nine years. Uh, it's a 511 Tac Tech plate carrier. I trained it to a decent amount. Stitching held up good, comfortable. It's got good ventilation, which is nice in the summertime. Uh, three mags in the front. If you notice, uh, I got my three mags in the front. There's no retention. The ones on my battle ball do have retention. That way if I take a tumble or something like that, um, they'll be retained, right? And I'm not losing all my ammo. So I've got that up front. I've got, uh, actually I take, took it out previously. Uh, Surefire, or not Surefire, Streamlight, uh, Flashlight. This one takes 18650s or CR123s. I keep it stock with the CR123s. Uh, they got a better shelf life. Don't forget your admin, all right? So I have a right in the rain notebook here, um, mechanical pencil in here, and a Sharpie that I've got. Um, right that way I can write stuff down. I've also got a whistle in here. Honestly, I just had it laying around. It seemed like a good idea. Uh, it doesn't take up any space. It's another method of signaling. I got my radio pouch up here. And so the radio pouch, it's right up on my chest. I can adjust it. I can adjust channels, adjust volumes. I'll have a headset running up to my ear underneath electronic ear pro. Uh, but if the headset fails for some reason, I can unplug it and I can still hear because it it's right here in front of me. It's not on my back where I have to have a buddy adjust or anything like that. Um, I've got a tactical knife here, right? That way if I'm in a scuffle or, or, or tied up with somebody, I, I can pull that out. Um, IFAC, you'll notice I've got a full-size IFAC there. Um, I, I built my own IFACs. I think we got an old video on, on, on some of our medical stuff. I'll probably do a new one in the near future. Notice I got one on the left, one on the right. That way, you know, no matter where I'm at, where I'm injured. I've got medical supplies on each side. They're also somewhat close to the center. That way I can reach over relatively easily uh, to grab you know, more medical supplies. And then I've got a rolled up dump pouch. So inside that dump pouch, I have uh, real thin tactical gloves and I would be wearing those. You know, if I'm in this kind of situation, I'm gonna have stuff protecting my hands. Uh, but that dump pouch is nice. Gives me the ability to put stuff in it, obviously. Um, spent mags, whatever. And so that's pretty much it. That's my system right now. Uh, so don't forget to check out our Patreon. I'm gonna have more in-depth videos where I'm really sitting down and teaching. All right, this is how you go about building the system from step one to where I'm at now. Your end goal might be different than my end goal, right? And that's fine, but we, we've got to thoughtfully put together a system to where we're doing this systematically um, and not just throwing a bunch of money into buying cool tactical gear and then we look back and we realize that we forgot everything else, all right? So, Check that out and uh, stay safe, stay prepared.